the agenda of my visit is uh, uh, to receive uh, an award which is uh, prepared by the ICCR. It is a Distinguished Almunai Award of 2013. I could not be here in 2013 uh, because of COVID, but I'm here today with, uh, I mean, by the invitation of uh, ICCR. Uh, this is the agenda. And um, I'll be also visiting some historical places uh, here in India. Uh, in addition, I will have also bilateral meetings with uh, different honorable ministers. Uh, the journey of uh, women's uh, history in Ethiopia, it has uh, really a big stake in the history of Ethiopia. Uh, more than 50% of the population uh, the previous time and now is women. Uh, women really significantly plays uh, a great role in the social and economic development of the country. Uh, as we all know, Ethiopia is a traditional uh, society. Um, the pat patriarchal system is there, so the male domination, especially in, in uh, uh, previous history, uh, was there, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, women didn't contribute uh, their part in the development of uh, Ethiopian uh, history. Um, there were significant women uh, who, who contributed a lot, um, especially in the peacemaking process and uh, in maintaining the society uh, fabric and developing uh, you know, a uh, strong relationship between the people, uh, I mean, uh, among us different ethnic group. So we cannot say that uh, they didn't lay a foundation. Mm, they uh, considerably um, uh, played a great role in, in society development. Um, all the time that we mention uh, a big victory that uh, Ethiopians had and we celebrate till now. Uh, it's not a victory only for Ethiopian, but it is a black victory for all Africans. That is Adwa. So when we always remember Adwa, the contribution of uh, uh, Taitu, uh, who were that time um, a queen, <coughs> So she contributed a lot, and other women also contributed for the freedom of uh, our country. So these and other women contributed a lot uh, in back history in Ethiopia, and still uh, they are also playing their role in different ways. Uh, we know that in the patriarchal society, the gender role uh, is more inclined to the reproductive role of women, but this uh, actually didn't uh, retain uh, women not to participate in all spheres. Actually, it also uh, you know, required a struggle uh, to bring gender equality in the country. Uh, though there were women who contributed their part for the development of the society, but uh, you know, the participation was not 50-50 actually. We are also running to ensure gender equality and uh, women empowerment in all spheres. Uh, so accounting uh, more than 50% of the population and not to participate to that level uh, really also had a negative impact in the development of our country. But now in the politics, in the economy, uh, in the social spheres, we are trying our best to, uh, you know, in, uh, increase the participation of women uh, so that uh, we can see that from the long history that we had, uh, women were participating, there were prominent women in the history, but uh, their number was few. Uh, in the education also, women were uh, not given uh, that opportunity to get into uh, 
the modern education system, uh, but now it's changed. So we can see that there is a progress. There were women who participated and their number was less, but now uh, when we see it is now changing and uh, I think uh, hopefully in the future also will bring significant change in this regard. Thank you for the very prominent question. Uh, when we think of women empowerment without considering education and economic empowerment, it's impossible. So if we say that uh, we are uh, committed to bring gender equality and equity in all spheres, we have to focus on education and economic empowerment of women. Especially, uh, I personally strongly believe that economic empowerment of women and uh, in education uh, is a key to all other uh, kind of empowerments. Uh, so that, uh, as you know, uh, gender issue or women issue, it's not one sectoral issue. So our sector is a cross-sectoral uh, ministry so that we have to work together in collaboration with Ministry of Education, Ministry of uh, Finance, Ministry of Industry, and all other ministries to bring uh, a significant change in the life of women. If we change, if we, we want to change the life of women in a sustainable way, so that we have to aggressively work on the, the participation of women in education and in economy as well. So for this, our ministry is working on revisiting the women's policy, the national women's policy, which ignores this part so that uh, we can achieve, you know, uh, for a sustainable change uh, so that all sectors will be committed uh, we have agreements with all sectors to work on this one and the mainstreaming issue is very important so in our ministry we have uh, a new department which is established uh, recently uh, that is a mainstreaming department which will uh, significantly look into the implementation of uh, gender uh, and women particularly, how it is addressed, how it is mainstreamed and embedded in the policies uh, of uh, significant sectors like education and health and economy. So our ministry is very much committed to bring um, uh, women's participation um, to the higher level. So uh, we are working on this one and um, we have also uh, women parliamentarian caucus. We know that the parliament is the lawmaker. So uh, if we want to bring a sustainable change in the participation of women in education and economy, so we, we have to have a frame, policy frame, framework and laws so that it's going to be a sustainable one. So we are working on uh, the, the policy framework and the implementation as well. Of course, uh, I cannot say that all problems, all challenges are elevated uh, now. Uh, so uh, still we are struggling, as I have said, the majority of the population are women that the participation is not uh, you know comparable with uh, with the population size that we have uh, this shows that there is a huge potential that the country didn't use and should use as well so uh, we have to strive you know to elevate the challenge of women in all spheres um, uh, whether they are on the top position or in the lower position, they still face different kind of challenges. So the level of uh, the, the women doesn't uh, give them liberty not to face challenges, but they have to cope up with challenges. Uh, so the whole journey that women are um, 
undertaking, it needs uh, a struggle. Uh, but if we set up policies in a proper way, if we put system and mechanism, I think that will make the challenge easier to women. Uh, that, that doesn't mean that they don't face any kind of challenge at all. So what we should do is, uh, you know, giving them opportunity at the same time, enabling the environment is very important. Uh, sometimes, you know, the opportunities are given for women and uh, it might be seen as like uh, they cannot just do it. Uh, but uh, as we are different, uh, women uh, needs is uh, gender need is different from men. So if we could make the environment conducive uh, so that they can be more productive, so we can, uh, we, we have to just look into that ways. For women who are in the office, for instance, if we just facilitate them uh, a daycare facility, if they do have kids so that they can keep them there and they can also do their jobs in the office properly and our ministry together with other sectors are also working on establishing daycares at workplaces and the other challenge is sexual harassment and we have that national sexual harassment policy that has to be implemented in all sectors and the regulatory body is our ministry we are together with other um, law uh, uh, enforcement agencies and institutions so that uh, when we come all together and work cooperatively, I, I, I think and I strongly believe that we can alleviate the challenges that women face at workplaces. This is also another critical area that we need to uh, give due attention, especially uh, regarding uh, the health um, uh, and health of women. Uh, it's very critical. Uh, you know, that is one area that we need to strongly work together with concerned sector, that's uh, Ministry of Health and others as well. Uh, as I have just mentioned, our, our society is a traditional society, so uh, women are facing a lot of uh, challenges in this regard uh, due to harmful traditional practices uh, and FGM is being practiced uh, in Ethiopia, so that uh, we have to also look into, uh, you know, uh, handling and uh, working on these, these matters because in one way or another it affects the health of women, um, especially girl child. Early marriage is there still, uh, but the, the magnitude is now decreasing and uh, early child mortality rate is also decreasing. Uh, during delivery, the, you know, there was uh, a big challenge, but now uh, because we give due attention and all the sectors who are concerned in coming together and working on this one, uh, we are trying to alleviate the problem and the challenge in women's health. Um, still, uh, we have a long way to go so that we, we can cope up with the challenge that we are facing. And the other one is uh, uh, protection. Uh, occupational safety and health, uh, especially for women who are working in different industries. Uh, that's uh, really very important. Uh, it will affect in one way or another if the safety uh, is not there, uh, if their, their health will be uh, distracted so that uh, we have to also uh, work on that one. We are working on it. Uh, we are getting progresses but uh, we, we have to strengthen that one as well. Ethiopia has uh, come up with uh, digitalization of Ethiopian uh, system. Uh, recently, uh, the Ethiopian digital strategy has been uh, effective uh, since last year and we are strongly working on that one. Um, uh, 
the ICT now, you know, the world it is one village so that we can also get access to uh, the globe, uh, what's going on and that technology has to also uh, have an advantage on, on the lives of women so that uh, we are we are now working on it it is a recent uh, strategy that we come up with that all sectors are working on that one and hopefully that will also significantly contribute to the empowerment uh, and betterment of Our ministry is in charge of dealing with all women issue, children's issue, and uh, youth, uh, person with disability, and senior citizens. And it's also uh, mandated to work on the whole social protection of the country. It's a huge mandate which is given to our ministry. Uh, it just touches or deals with all uh, human beings in the country. So, um, as you have mentioned, we are also obliged to work on youth issues, uh, specifically working on uh, personal development of youth and uh, volunteerism and national service as well. Actually, that program is going to be a new program in Ethiopia. So voluntarily, they will serve the nation. So uh, we are working on the personal development and mindset of the youth. And as I have mentioned, you know, to work on the youth issue, on women issue or children issue, the key uh, part of our ministry is working on the advocacy part and working on uh, awareness creation as well. Um, we have more than 3,000 uh, youth centers, youth personal development centers in Ethiopia. We are now working on, uh, you know, upgrading those youth centers into entrepreneur center so that uh, the youth population will be, uh, you know, self-reliant. Uh, rather than depending on the government to give them uh, jobs so that they will be entrepreneurs at the, at the end of the day. So giving them uh, skill training, engaging them in small and medium enterprises is very important. Uh, the unemployment rate is huge. Uh, even uh, university graduate students may not able to get in the government jobs in the government sector. So they have to uh, have, uh, I mean, look into ways that they can uh, sustain and they can also uh, be self uh, really and, uh, resilient so that uh, we are working on personal development, giving uh, trainings. Uh, the Labor and Skills Ministry is working closely uh, with our ministry so that we will alleviate the problem of unemployment. So uh, the, the Labor and Skills Ministry is in charge of uh, creating uh, jobs. Uh, that doesn't mean that the government is going to create jobs and offer to the youth, but uh, giving them the skill training, uh, the necessary skill training that will uh, also lead um, the youth to, to create their own jobs. I'm very much uh, happy to be here in India. Uh, I'm uh, really honored to receive uh, ICCR Distinguished Alumni Award of 2013. Uh, the culture uh, and the living style of the Indian people and the Ethiopian people is almost the same. I lived here for three years and I can witness that one. And, uh, the bilateral relationship, which have been just uh, uh, established long back, is a strong one. And the government of Ethiopia would love to also um, scale up and elevate uh, the bilateral relationship, uh, relationship that we have with the government of India to strategic uh, relationship. And the Ethiopian government is working on this one 
and hopefully uh, the, the relationship and the friendship between Ethiopia and uh, India will continue for forever and we really uh, appreciate the Indian government uh, which is working on the, the skill uh, development, human development uh, of Ethiopian people. Uh, I got a chance to do my PhD here in Andhra Pradesh, uh, Andhra University. Uh, so there, there are a lot of uh, um, Ethiopian people who got their masters and PhD from India who are contributing a lot back in Ethiopia. Um, this is like a bridge that will strengthen the partnership of the two uh, countries' people. And um, uh, we would love to uh, extend our sincere sincere thanks to the Indian government to be all the time by the side of the Ethiopian government and people, especially in, in the time that we were in difficulties. So we really appreciate and acknowledge the government and the people of India. And I just would love to say happy 75th Independence Day to all Indian people and the government of India. Thank you. Thank you.